find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. I'm hungry, spark, but I ain't starving yet. Jane for the pain, cocktail, dollar set. Never said I was a gangster or a thug, but I'm an animal. Pizza for the taste of the pizza. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter. This is episode 105. Coming back at you here. Uh, talking about independent pro wrestling uh, from a couple of guys, a couple of yahoos who, who work around it so much. we got to keep talking about it. Uh, myself here in Pittsburgh, PA, talking uh, uh, video production and the like. And not that there's much because it's all got snowed out in January, but a guy that doesn't have to worry about snow, he's Eamon Payton. He's down in San Antonio, Texas, the voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling. How you doing, man? I'm doing good. We've gotten a bit of frost in, in the last month, but not nothing too bad. Not, obviously not nothing Pittsburgh comparing, but and yeah. Now, and now we're a typical podcast talking about the weather. As 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 you do. As you do. Uh, but anyways, uh, uh, check us out over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. You can check out all of our interviews, 100, uh, 104 other interviews that we've done. Well, actually, 103. There was a little thing that happened. Uh, but at least 104 conversations about independent pro wrestling in some fashion. You can let us know what you think about the conversations we have, the people we interview, and let us know questions if we've uh, released who we're talking about in the upcoming week. 412-206-WMS0 or good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. And, of course, at Mayhem Show on the Twitter. Please go subscribe to the show. We're on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, YouTube, and, of course, on the Wrestling Man Show Facebook. We're putting the videos there as well. And you can join us and join the conversation on any of those platforms there. Uh, so, uh, Eamon, tell me, uh, we got a bit of a return this week. A bit of a return. Uh, it's been, uh, I want to say, a little over a year since we last had this guest on our show. And uh, in that time, has, has done a lot of spectacular things, both in Texas and, and beyond. Uh, very excited to have him back on. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back to the Indie Mayhem Show, Mr. Keith Lee. Keith, how are you this evening? I'm fantastic. Greetings, gentlemen. Greetings, podcast fans. I hope everybody's doing well. Absolutely. Thank you again for uh, coming on and talking to us. Uh, I believe... Uh, I, I looked in the last time we checked was around last time we checked in with you was around October of uh, 2014. So it's been a little while and um, and you've done some really big things lately. Uh, how's how's your wrestling career sort of been shaping out since we last talked? Um, <laughs> it's become very active. Mm -hmm. uh, ever since returning from injury, uh, things really picked up. I, I think I said it, you know, a, a little over a year ago when I was on here that, that things were on the turnaround for me and uh it's proven to be nothing less than a thrill ride at the moment and it's continuing to pick up pace and that that's that's the uh that's the that's the way i'm trying to keep it right now <laughs> awesome very cool um well since we last talked to you obviously you've been doing a lot of different things in the world of wrestling uh one of the things we definitely want to talk to you about is uh you've been teaming up uh uh in the last year with uh uh, someone who we've had on the Wrestling Mayhem show in the past, and that's uh, Shane Taylor. Uh, you guys are the uh, pretty boy killers, and you seem to be, you know, making a name for yourself as a, as a team across not just Texas, but even, like I said, even beyond that. Uh, what's it like been sort of finding this role, you know, in a, in a tag team with Shane? Uh, honestly, uh, <laughs> unexpected first. I don't think either of us were particularly expecting it, but... Um, it happened, and if you look at the both of us, it's pretty obvious we murder people on our own. So now we're just a, a team of murderers at the moment. Uh, it's been joyful, and it's been fun. The road trips have been great. Um, all the experiences we're having right now are, are fresh, and, and I guess you could say further motivation for us to keep doing what we do. Not only is the experiences that type of a scenario, there's also the fans themselves that offer up a lot of inspirational words almost daily as it is right now. So that's something that we're really grateful for and just looking to continue the trend, if you will. Absolutely. And it seems uh, from the stuff I've seen of you and Shane and in, 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 you know, as a tag team, uh, you guys definitely provide a different dynamic when it comes to the two of you. Obviously, you're both very powerful individuals, but uh, uh, even some of the things you do separately are very, you know, they, I think it almost makes for a really good team. 
Uh, would you say that when it comes to sort of the stuff you guys do in the ring? Uh, I think it's easily said that Shane and I both tend to balance each other out, not only in the ring, but outside the ring. If you look in the ring, you see that Shane is the gentleman that hits people extremely hard. And I use the term gentleman extremely loosely. <laughs> um, I am very happy to be tagging with him because I, I, I see and I hear the effects of the strikes that he delivers. And they're not very nice. Whereas myself, even being almost the same same weight as him, you know, I, I provide more of a uh, an agile type of feel, and uh, we just tend to balance each other in the ring in that in that type of feel. Even in in, in life, though, he's <laughs> he and I are two completely different individuals. <laughs> I mean, we have the same goals in wrestling, but you got a man that's you know obsessed with man cards and and being manly and things of that sort. And then you got me that's, you know, the absolute nerd uh, watching anime and playing video games. <laughs> the only thing we do similarly is lift weights. So that's about it. <laughs> and I think that dynamic like that is, is very cool to see. Because obviously if anyone's seen you at shows or know you, you definitely embrace your inner uh, your inner geeky side, which is always, which is always cool. Um, but uh, you guys obviously, like I mentioned, not just in Texas, have been doing some amazing stuff. You've even uh, worked met multiple times now for uh, Ring of Honor Wrestling as a tag team. Uh, what's it been like for you know to get in there and, and be a part of you know, you know working for Ring of Honor? Obviously, in their Future of Honor sort of program, I guess you could say, but still being out there on that platform. Um, <laughs> I, I I would almost say it leaves me speechless, but that would be a lie. Um, I generally have a lot to say, especially when it comes to Ring of Honor. Uh, at the moment, we're both just in that mindset where we realize the type of blessing that we have to be put on a stage where we can showcase what we do on that level. But it's not just the opportunities with them lately uh, that we've had. It, it's the, the pushing and the grinding to create more of those. And... Even as nice as it is with Ring of Honor giving those opportunities, it's even nicer when some of the gentlemen in the back in in the locker room, um, they go out of their way to look out for those people that they like. And I can tell you right now, I've had Jay Briscoe, Christopher Daniels, Kenny King, uh, plenty of guys in in the locker room that just are they're looking. They they want to see me there they believe in what uh, Keith Lee and Shane Taylor bring to the table. And the biggest thing is to not let them down. But another big thing is to continue to lift ourselves up at the same time. Definitely. And, and I think also with, with you and Shane, but also numerous other wrestlers, something I really love seeing uh, particularly with ring of honor is um, their, their use of, of Texas wrestlers. It's cool to see a lot of Texas talent, get featured on their shows, not even some of the shows that come to Texas, even beyond that. Um, do you feel like it's cool that, you know, guys from that area where it's for the longest time, Texas has been considered sort of its own thing and, and sort of to the side, almost in a sense, do you think it's kind of interesting that more Texas wrestlers are kind of getting that opportunity to uh, wrestle on that kind of a, plat uh, kind of a platform? Um, <laughs> I think, there's a lot of talent in Texas that gets overlooked. And I think that anybody that wrestles here or has been here will agree and, or um, say the same thing if asked that question. And because of whatever that situation is that caused it, I don't know, but I can tell you, you know, directly with ring of honor, directly booking me and Shane Taylor in Indiana and Illinois. That's not a normal thing. Mm -hmm. um, that wasn't us just showing up and saying, hey, can we get a spot? That was them saying, can you be here? We'll do this and this. That is an honor in itself because of the Texas thing. And, and a lot of times wrestling today is seems to be a bigger thing in the in the Northeast and some of those promoters up there just don't see 
the worth in a ticket from Texas because uh, it's an expensive ordeal for them or, or, or that just may be an excuse for some. You just don't know uh, what they're thinking all the time. But I think that the more of us that keep this type of uh, progress going, the more that people will see exactly what is in Texas and available in the highest level. I mean, there's so much talent here. It's it's almost mind boggling what gets overlooked here. Totally. And, and it seems like you guys have been getting yourself featured to a much wider audience, not just at the Ring of Honor live events, but also I know your match was up on YouTube on their channel. They even, I think posted a promo that you and Shane did. So it seems like you two are kind of getting out there more. And then going back to what you said, it seems like Ring of Honor has got a lot of, uh, lot of confidence in you and Shane uh, going forward. And yeah. Um, and that's something that's, you know, a touching thing for us. And, 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 you know, we just don't want to, we don't want to mess anything up. We're, we are very focused. We're very driven. Um, and our intent is to not let them down and not just them, but these fans that have had no idea who we were. And before we left, that ring and they were up giving us standing ovations or chanting for us or whatever the case may be. It's not just ring of honor, but it's for those fans that have shown us the love that has caused ring of honor to have that type of confidence in what we do inside those ropes. So it's, it's, it's something we're just, we're proud of. And I think that we're making a definition in what athletes are because you see a lot of guys out here that they're not they're not athletes in the ring and sometimes they hurt themselves sometimes they dismantle others but if you got two ginormous guys as some people would say and we're in there moving with the best of them i think that uh, and i i say moving with the best of them in a literal sense these are mm-hmm. literally some of the most athletic guys on the planet then it it just creates a a, a sense of uh, pride for us that we want to continue. Definitely. And then from what it seems that you two have been doing, it seems like it, there's no stopping you two when it comes to, comes to showing just that. Um, also, but since we last talked to you, obviously not just in the tag team uh, ranks have you been doing some cool stuff, but you also as a singles competitor have done some great stuff. Uh, I believe we, uh, by the, when the time we talked to you, you hadn't won yet even the Inspire Pro uh, Pure Perceived Championship and, and, this whole last year, like it seems that you've been really, you know, elevating that championship up with uh, some phenomenal contests that people are really starting to get behind you. Uh, uh, what's it been like uh, uh, as pure prestige champion in Spire Pro? You know what? I, I've, I've decided that uh, this month I'm going to figure out exactly when the Inspire event was in February of last year, because that's when I first won that title. And before I end up defending it against Scott Summers, it will have been over a year since I've won that championship. Mm-hmm. And like you said, it is my entire goal to continue to raise the prestige of that championship. And up until whenever it is, I may or may not lose it. If I continue to hold it, then that just proves exactly the type of competitor that I am. And if I don't, then that just means it took someone very bad to beat me and take it from me. Um, as the champion, uh, as far as being the pure prestige champion goes, there's, um, I've had a lot of question marks directed my direction. I've had a lot of challenges directed my way, which I've welcomed both with open arms. Um, and I, I'm honestly... At this point, I'm really hungry for higher levels of competition. I want to put on the matches that I know that I can, and I want those those competition levels to rise. And I think that that's heading in a proper direction right now with the opponent I have coming up, which is Showtime Scott Summers on February 28th. And... To me, it's just been something I've held with pride. I've taken it multiple places with me. I've done what I can in terms of promoting Inspire Pro uh, as one of the champions. 
I think that I represent the champion quite well. I, I dress different than, than the majority of talents in wrestling. Mm-hmm. I carry myself differently. I speak differently. There's just a multitude of things I do differently from a regular guy or girl. So, Definitely. Um, I was going to say, going go towards ahead. that point, um, uh, to, like you said, so the way you sort of carry yourself, I think a lot of people have that assumption sometimes of, of people you know, as powerful as you and sort of that wrestle – uh, in, in the style that you do, but it seems like, you know, you're as much as even your in ring ability. I think the stuff that people have really gotten behind you is your, your personality and, and, and your, uh, like I mentioned, sort of your geekiness and also your uh, willingness to embrace that. Uh, do you find that that to be as important, I guess you could say when it comes to, you know, you know, making your name in professional wrestling? Do I find that it can be a what? Uh, do you find it like as important as, as say like the in ring stuff and, and you know, the, the, the work put into actually, you know, being, in, oh, in, I, yeah. um, you know what, <laughs> that's a really good question. And the truth is that is something that I decided was important to me in 2008. Um, not, uh, not a lot of people that are current fans know this, but a lot of fans that have known me for years and years and years before injuries and whatnot knew me as Kevin Payne. And that's what I debuted as in 2005. And I wrestled under that name for three years. And in 2008, I decided, screw this. I want these fans to know who I am. Um, and it's not that I'm just, uh, oh, well, here's my personal life. Mm-hmm. on display for everybody it's more of a this is me this is what i'm into i want you to know at least that much of who keith lee is so when people say well what what's your wrestling name i'm like it's my name it's it's my name i don't mm-hmm. i don't use a some sort of made-up name i don't use any of that stuff I just let people see me for who i am and whether they accept it or not is up to them but there's nobody that sees me in the ring that can deny my capabilities inside of the ring, whether they like what I do or what I like at all, or not, you know, so it doesn't hamper me one way or the other. Definitely. And I think uh, I, I bring it up because I feel almost in like, you know, 2015 and then now 2016, obviously, uh, especially when it comes to indie wrestling and also even the stars that have moved on to sort of the mainstream from indie wrestling it seems to be the people with the most popularity are the ones that do kind of, kind of like you said, put your, put yourself out there in a sense. And I, I think beyond even your matches, you know, if you're ever at a show with you, you know, and you're in, intera- I can see, you know, you're interacting with fans and the, just the way you interact with them, I think goes a long way in, in what, uh, yeah, in what, you know, how fans receive you necessarily. Would you agree with that? I think in today's wrestling, yes. Um, there, there are some times um, where I, I, I suppose that some people would say a character should be involved with those interactions, but that's also why I prefer to just be myself because a lot of people think that I'm a character, but this is really just who I am. Um, and that's what makes it far better for me. I don't have to try to remember what kind of a character I am. I don't have to you know, think about how a character would respond to certain things. I get to just be me. And if I feel like an asshole all the time, then I get (laughs) to be that. And if I don't, then I get to be genuine, typical, nice Keith. Sometimes people light a fire under me and then they get the asshole. And sometimes people are a joy to deal with and they just get normal me, which, you know, it's, it's genuine either way it goes. Absolutely. Definitely. Um, Going back to sort of the, your career going forward as well, obviously we're only a month into 2016 and a lot of people have, you know, make goals and stuff like that for like new years. But uh, uh, do you have any particular goals when it comes to this next coming year in mind uh, in ring of honor or maybe, you know, opponents you haven't faced that you'd like to, or places you work that you haven't, uh, is there anything that you kind of have a, uh, on your uh, bucket list, so to speak? Um. There, there's quite a few actually. I think, uh, and I've separated them now as, as in terms of, you know, tag team and, and singles goals. Um, I, I didn't really make them particularly for 2016, but these are just goals that I have set in place. Um, 
I think as a tag team, uh, me and Shane's first few opponents we really want are um, War Machine, uh, Killer Elite Squad, and well, pretty much any tag team from Ring of Honor. Um, just watching those guys just makes us want to jump in the ring sometimes and just ruin matches because <laughs> we just want to. The competition level is just that high. And we're both very competitive guys. Um, so anybody in Ring of Honor, Killer Elite Squad, War Machine, uh, I think if I had to put a list from Ring of Honor, it'd probably be the Briscoes, the Young Bucks, A and X. Um, <clears throat> I think those would be the main people that we're really wanting to get in the ring and tussle with. Uh, singularly, I I always love wrestling Raymond Rowe because, and speaking of which, I have a match against him February 12th at VIP Wrestling in Arlington, Texas mm -hmm. for the VIP Championship. And him and I just have a tendency to beat the crap out of each other. Um, and, 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 do are, some, and do some very spectacular things as well, uh, especially on your part. Uh, <laughs> at, least, at least from the last time I saw you guys, so I believe you did a uh, you landed on your feet off of a monkey flip from Ray at one point. Yeah, um, I tend to do things that most 330 pound guys will not do, um, and I think that's an attribution to my athletic uh, ways. It was just stuff I, I I like to pull things out that even surprise him. If anybody ever sees that clip, you'll see his face, and even he's like WTF. <laughs> and I said that because I don't know if I can use the word, but anyway. <laughs> Um, so aside from Roe, um, there's other guys I would really like to face. I, I would love a match with, uh, Ricochet. Mm -hmm. Um, I really wanted a match with AJ Styles, but, uh, <laughs> seems like that's probably going to be quite a wait. <laughs> um, I would like to get in the ring again with Brian Cage. We had a phenomenal match, um, in November of last year. And it was, it, it, it could have been even more. So I'm, I'm looking forward to a second and a third uh, match against him. And I mean, across the world, it's just a, such a vast array of talent, especially right now in this day and age. So um, I think my biggest goal personally, my number one priority is um, A, gain a main spot with Ring of Honor and B, get myself uh, to Japan. So nice. those are those are one and two, like the, the highest priorities I have right now. Awesome. Very cool. And then as you're bringing up matches, I also remember that uh, you actually had a pretty big match in 2015. You actually got to wrestle Samoa Joe uh, when he was doing his last sort of run on the independence before oh, okay. going to WWE. Um, what was it like wrestling him? I mean, that's a that's a obviously a dream match for anyone that's kind of followed your career. Yes. Uh, he was definitely one of the guys that I definitely wanted to wrestle. And I would love to go again with him because that <laughs> is, you know, two big guys. And he, he, he hit me hard enough to kind of take me out of normal Keith. Like there's certain <laughs> levels of Keith in the ring. There's, there's happy go lucky Keith, which is how every match starts. Like, I rarely take anybody seriously unless there's a reason for me to. Um, and I think that with Joe, I was more nervous than anything else. So it wasn't a very serious match feel for me until he hit me. And then it became, a, oh, he hits hard. This is going to be fantastic. And uh, we both left out of there with all sorts of marks and such. And we had a very long talk after the match. And in the end, we actually became, you know, Decent, decent uh, acquaintances and exchange information and all that. And he just he gives me good words of positivity from time to time. And it's, you know, something else that just helps and keeps that fire lit and keeps me motivated. Awesome. It's very cool. Um, uh, going to some uh, more of our regular questions, we also, because we have uh, a few regular questions, I don't think we got the chance to ask you uh, when you were on the show last. Uh, so I wanted to get your thoughts. Um, one of the questions we always ask our guests is, uh, uh, what are you watching currently, uh, wrestling wise? Whether it's for uh, recreation or for studying purposes, is there anything that you sort of uh, have your eye on currently? 
Um, I, I mean, obviously, I watch Ring of Honor religiously, like everybody should on the Comet Network, guys. Wednesday is <laughs> 11 Central, 12. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, I watch a lot of Ring of Honor. I watch a load, and I mean a load of New Japan anything. Um, I also watch uh, older Japanese wrestling currently. Um, I had a very long talk with a man that I had an absolutely brutal match with um, also in November, which was Masada. And he directed me in the direction of some names that I haven't studied or given the proper amount of study to learn from. And I've just been watching a lot of older Japanese stuff. Um, as well as some, um, I guess you could say, East Coast, but in tr- and I, I like watching, uh, I'm going to sound like such a fan, but truthfully I am, uh, <laughs> Mr. Zack Sabre Jr., <laughs> that dude is a monster. Um, that's another person I would like to wrestle, but I like watching him because he is so sleek and his transitions are so beautiful. He's just, you can tell he's extremely comfortable and natural in the ring. And I just love seeing stuff like that. Awesome. Definitely. And that's a high match. I would definitely love to see as well. Um, and, and going to our, our sort of big question that we ask everyone, I think I asked you this last time, but obviously it's been a little while. So the answer, you know, may change or adjust, um, uh, and feel free to take it in any direction. But, uh, we asked all our guests, uh, what is the best thing, in your opinion, about independent wrestling and the worst thing about independent wrestling? Uh, you know what? You did ask me this last time. And, <laughs> um, and now, now that you ask it again, I think there is one change to my answer. Um, I think that but I'll start with – actually, I'll start with the worst because that's where the change happens. Now, previously I said – that the worst thing in wrestling are people that are in wrestling and don't belong in wrestling, whether it be um, untrained people, uh, people that don't look like wrestlers or what have you. However, you know, I I come to think about certain things and I, I watch a lot of talent today and I had mentioned, you know, smaller guys not being, not not looking like wrestlers, but the more that I watch and I, and I, and I pay a lot of attention to locker rooms and, and wrestling itself. And a lot of people don't think I watch their matches or, or anything of that sort, but I watch a lot of people, whether I know them or not. And there are just some guys, regardless of size that will make you believe in them and what they do. Um, so I guess to me, the worst thing in wrestling would be untrained people that are extremely dangerous to the future of wrestling. Um, and I think that one thing I'm going to change is that it's promotions that use that type of supposed talent. Uh, whether it be because they don't want to pay or because they're friends or because they like a certain girl, whatever the case may be, that's probably one of the worst things. All the little promotions, and when I say little, I mean the trashy promotions that use what they call talent when it shouldn't be used. Um, as far as the best thing goes, remains the same, man. It's always, it's the fans. It's, it's, I think as a professional wrestler, you have to have a love for it. And I think that's probably one of the best things is the love, the passion, but those fans create an energy that's unlike anything that I could ever get during any workout I've ever done. No matter how tired I am, no matter how beat up I am, those fans will will me on to continue doing whatever it is I'm doing in that ring. Even if I don't belong in there, i.e. the match with Masada and all those weapons. But, <laughs> <laughs> you know, they lit a fire under my buns and uh, we we definitely made it through that. So uh, always, always, I, I, I owe everything and I think every wrestler does, every promotion does, the business itself owes what it is to those fans. 
Absolutely. I, I am fully agree. Um, well, thank you very much, Keith, for joining us again on the show. Very great to talk to you again and sort of get an update on everything that's been happening with you. Uh, if uh, listeners want to check you out on social media or if you have any upcoming events that uh, people can check you out at, uh, feel free to uh, plug away. Oh, well, let me get started. <clears throat> so, um, February 6th, I will be debuting at Booker T's Reality of Wrestling promotion. And lo and behold, on my first outing, I get a shot at their heavyweight championship against, uh, I believe his name is Gino. Uh, so that's happening uh, this upcoming Saturday. On the 12th, as I mentioned, I'll be going one-on-one with Raymond Rowe at VIP Wrestling for the VIP Heavyweight Championship once again. Uh, February 20th will be me, Shane, and Mr. Moonshine Mantel versus War Machine and the NWA World Heavyweight Champion, Jack Stane. That's going to be huge. That's at Pro Wrestling Texas. Uh, 28th, as I mentioned earlier, Inspire Pro Wrestling, me versus Showtime Scott Summers, and he will be challenging for my Pure Prestige Championship. And all of this information can be gained on any of my social media platforms, which I've actually changed and made far more simple. If you just, all of them are real Keith Lee, one all together. So, uh, Instagram and Twitter at Real Keith Lee and Facebook slash Real Keith Lee. That's it. Absolutely. Thank you very much again, Keith, for uh, stopping by and talking with us. Uh, definitely, if you are, you know, follow at Real Keith Lee, and also if you see Real Keith Lee on the show near you, show near you, definitely go check it out because you will not be disappointed. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, and uh, we're going to take a quick look, I believe, uh, at uh, our good friend Tony Garza at the Wrestling Revolution, telling uh, telling. Uh, his story of what the mayhem show means to him. We'll be right back. Well, it, it's had a, a time impact, economic impact, and but I mean it's all good. Uh, I, I'm gonna be honest. I, I had a little itch in my in my back that I think I want to start my own podcast now. So it's definitely it's definitely happening. <laughs> Uh, we'll see what what 2016 has for us. Indy Mayhem Show, fantastic! Thank you, Antonio Garza, for uh, uh, the WrestlingRevolution.com. Uh, check out his stuff, and he's got a lot of stuff going on. Uh, a lot of reviews of some uh, 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 some indies, some 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 Royal Rumbles, some NXT stuff, all kinds of great stuff over there. Uh, so I want to give him a shout out. And, of course, uh, uh, thanks to Keith Lee. He's a guy that I know um, I was excited to see that he's coming back uh, on the show because he's a guy that's popped up a lot on my radar. And, uh, and again, he's one of those. He, he's, he's fun. I like to hear that he's a geek, too. Uh, so if it's right in, I, I'd love to see him up here in the Pittsburgh area. And, and, and hopefully somebody out there <coughs> is listening to that and can get that lined up. Uh, could you imagine? Can we, can, we, can we throw Keith Lee in Super Indie or something? Like, would that make sense? Uh, I, I you know. think he would be a perfect fit in Super Indie. <laughs> hey, plumber, let's 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 see what we can do there. Let's uh, we can get him coming up with a, a car ride with uh, Ray Rowe. If they they stop punching each other in the face or whatever they're doing down there in your Inspire Pro. <laughs> I I need to see this video you guys were talking about. That sounds great. Uh, so hey, um, first of all, I wanted to give kind of a shout out to you guys. Um. Uh, I, I I forgot how much I loved listening to you guys talk about Lucha Underground. I don't. <laughs> I have actually listened to you guys talk about episodes of Lucha Underground in season one more than I've watched episodes of Lucha Underground in season one. Okay, what no, you guys no. what you guys are doing on the midweek war? And that's what that's what got me, and that's why I knew I had to get in at the ground floor of season two. And, and talking about that because you know, of course, this is uh, you know we talk to the guys from these shows, from the TNAs, from the not WWEs. Uh, I, I like to have the broad spectrum to this. It's not just the indie wrestling and the bingo halls, guys. Um, uh, it, it's it's a love for wrestling. I think it's a broader topic, but. Also, I, I, I hope that this show and I hope what we do with a lot of the Wrestling Mayhem shows is um, kind of promote 
a love of wrestling. Not the you know, we were kind of talking about some some reviews of wrestling shows here on the break, and and how I love how a guy like Tragar here. And I'm sorry, I, I really need to get your blog URL. Uh, 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 so I can promote it a bit more, that man. Uh, but it's good stuff, and, and and he posts stuff as a wrestling fan. He's writing his review as a wrestling fan and his thoughts on it. Um, and I appreciate that versus the the, the ones that really kind of you know ah, as a five star match, as a three, that's a two star match. You know, and you look at it, like what are you basing that on? You know what like, I mean? What does it mean? <laughs> Don't we have that problem also? Like we've been seeing with Lucha Underground, uh, with the Jim Cornettes out there and saying this isn't wrestling. Drop a nuclear bomb on it. Like that's in the thing. I couldn't believe he, he was. Yeah. It doesn't, like what is this? It's not even a wrestling promo at this point. Uh, but but really interesting to see, right? Um, you know this old school thinking and versus it's 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 taking it for what it worked, what it's worth. You know, and I think certain indie shows don't work. If you look, if you just look at the card of what happened at Renegade Wrestling Alliance, it it's not going to tell you anything, right? You know, if right. I just look at the card in Inspire Pro, you can't convey to me how it feels to be at that show. And I think that's and sometimes that doesn't even come across on DVD as hard as as your team tries and my team tries yeah. to get that out there. We try to do what we can within our means. Um, and and I think uh, I, I I think that's that's really important to 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 to, to kind of talk about. I mean, and I'm really loved the conversations that that I'm hearing uh, again listening to the, the We Watch Wrestling podcast. I'm freaking hooked on that with you guys. Uh, that that I don't know, Eamon, Are you in that in that troop of of, of our guys that listen to those guys? I, I I listen to them every once in a while. I don't think I follow them as religiously but, as like like Bobby or right. or Matt Carlin's. But again, like like I couldn't give two craps about PWG because I don't watch it a lot. Yeah, you know, other than hearing all oh, there's a lot of fun stuff happening there. But again, yeah. I just love hearing those guys being excited about wrestling. Yeah. That's enough. There's just there's two ways people like you said. There's two ways that people view it. I view it obviously wrestling more i like when people are passionate about wrestling uh i mentioned it when we did the last uh for the lucha underground premiere yeah because uh, i went to a premiere party that was at um a zone bar in downtown austin hot stuff and, aiming going to the premiere party all red carpeting uh, it up with lucha underground look at this all, guy all fancy um but it was so interesting i i feel like people say it a lot but it really is true wrestling is a communal event right and right I love Lucha Underground. I'll watch Lucha Underground and, and love it forever. But like, uh, there was something also that added to it, me being around like maybe like 60, 70 other people who loved it just as much as I did and were like chanting at the, at, chanting at a television screen. You know right. what I mean? Right. Um, that's, that's what I love. Like there's people who are more, like you said, more analytical with it and that's fine, but it's just like, I don't know. I, I, I consider wrestling more of an art form than the science. There's people out there who will, Take um, uh, Meltzer's like rating, like his star ratings of <laughs> matches, and use like use it for like scientific analysis, yeah. and be like, this is his, you know, how this wrestler got this an average of this rate. It's like that's one dude's opinion. You're you're basing you know a person's performance on one dude's opinion. I'm, you know, obviously Dave Meltzer's super you know reputable. I'm not, you know, trying to take anything away from him, but it's still just one dude's opinion. Right, right, and and I think I think I get, everybody's I think everybody tries to emulate what they see, right? Like as a podcaster, we try to emulate the radio and the shows that we listen to, and maybe other wrestling podcasts or what we see on TV, uh, or, or, or something to that effect, right? So as right. a person with a wrestling blog, as there are many out there, out there, right? I mean, hey, as, as many as there are. Any of us, um, um, any of us that uh, do a podcast, right? Who the hell am I to do a podcast, right? And I, I'm hoping yeah. over the years we've kind of proven that we're, we're we, we we have something to say that's worth listening to. Um, you know, mm-hmm. being around this long, uh, for instance. But but they're sitting there and, and saying, okay, this is what Meltzer is doing, so I'm going to do my version of it, right? Uh, and I'm not saying that that's like horribly wrong or anything like that. I it just I I I think. Um, but you almost feel bad for him in a sense, like right? It's, it's when, where's the part you started this because you enjoy wrestling, and it seems like that's not the crux of what you're doing anymore, right? Right. So I mean, it, it seems like you like you know focus so much time on like the analytical side of it, and it's like there's nothing wrong with it, but it just sometimes you just feel like I you know. 
you know, just sit and enjoy it. Like, just, you know what I mean? Not to say people don't enjoy it, but, like, don't worry about, you know, what makes a two-star match or a three-star match. Like, right. just just watch and, <laughs> and either like it or don't. You know, here's the problem, too. Isn't the isn't the, the conversation so intangible? Like, we've seen this. You, know, you and I sit there raw. And, and, well, actually, I, I, sometimes I look at you for this because you have something that you've, Kind of have a sticking point on, right? And, and and all of us do this, especially watching like a Monday Night Raw, right? Where you're like, yeah. I, I don't understand why 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 is this happening, you know? But again, mm-hmm. kind of like, man, you know, we always have that this that's fine comment, right? Because we can't really <laughs> tell you <laughs> that's about that's about the FJ town. Chris. Yeah, yeah. But it's the disambiguous, like, man, just sit back. It's a thing that happened. It's it, they probably didn't even think about it as much as you you just thought about it, and they just put that thing on national. TV. TV and it's probably one of the highest rated things that happened tonight, right? Just because that yeah. so many people are looking. Uh, like I think, unfortunately, we're sitting there and we're watching like a Monday Night Raw, and 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 we have for so long, and now we're all we do is compare it to the good old days. <laughs> yeah, and 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 you can. I think it is possible to sit down on WWE Raw and have fun. It's yeah, hard, I- but it's it is definitely still hard for me to do that, right? Um, right. because of where we're at with, with our, I don't know. I don't want to say like wrestling knowledge. That sounds so, that sounds so horrible when I say it. Well, like I think, I, I think there is that thing of like, all oh, like you mentioned, like that, oh, it, oh, back in the good old days sort of thing. And that's happens a lot. That happens for people who watch wrestling in the nineties and in the eighties and even before that. Um, I think that, um, I, I, I was trying to pull it up, but I don't know if I'd be able to, uh, Excalibur, who's the commentator for PWG. Uh, just posted a really, really great tweet about like 10 years from now, people are going to be what, you know, there are people going to be emulating and falling in love basically with the wrestlers of the modern day. Currently your AJ Styles, your um, Finn Balor's, your young bucks, all that stuff. And they're going to be, you know, saying, Oh, I miss when wrestling was back in those days. You know what I mean? Like, it is, it's just a thing that happens. You know what I mean? They're going to treat them like we treated, you know, you know, the rock and Austin and, um, Hogan and all those guys. Like they're going to be considered when wrestling was good. Cause wrestling's obviously people say people, there's a lot of people just think that because wrestling isn't what it was, that it's downturned, you know, Jim Cornette commenting saying like, you know, uh, I like when wrestling makes money and now the, and wrestling's not making money anymore. That's not really the case. Mm-hmm. Like maybe, you know, there's the business has changed, but it's still successful. And we are living in a, in a very great period for wrestling right now. I feel. Yeah. Yeah. And just kind of step, step back and kind of, uh, you know, like we say, we, we try to talk about the stuff we like in the way, the way to be fans. Um, we almost have to reeducate the people, don't we? A bit, of yeah. How, how to and be then I even educate just give them time. Yeah, yeah. You know? Because I, well, here's, I mean, I, I, I've been saying this. I, I, I you know, I've said this in private. And I'm saying it a little more vocally these days. I love uh, our good friends Justin Labar, those guys over at Chair Shot Reality, guys over at Wrestle Zone, right? They, they do a great job with what they do, but mm-hmm. it's not the kind of wrestling show that I want to do, right? And, yeah. And and I, I don't mean that in a demeaning way. Um, but I know if I talked about wrestling day in and day out the, in the manner they do, and, I, and it's hard for me to kind of describe what the difference is, how I feel. And, and maybe somebody's listening to the, the way we do wrestling mayhem show and don't see the difference. And, and, and that's fine. But to me, uh, uh, that the way, how, how do I put this? The way that they talk about wrestling and it's in that common consciousness right of how yeah. everybody thinks about wrestling as far as dirt sheets as far as this is the thing that's happening backstage right and and again there why are we you know as we want to be something different contributing to that conversation when we can have yeah. a different conversation it's like okay what do you like about that show you know instead of just complaining about it you know uh, you know well, what, well, complaining especially about, like what it used to be well, well it wasn't right this. right or doesn't, or, mean it, or doesn't mean it's bad yeah or or sitting here and trying to armchair book to a certain degree it's more just like let's just be fans and talk about this thing and that's where this that's yeah. where the roots of what we've been trying to do is and, and, and this show is 
you know, but truly about being a fan and loving the alternatives like National Pro Wrestling Day. You're not going to do it? Hey, before we transition to that. I oh, okay. Oh, sorry. Sorry, because I, I realized you were trying to transition I jumped, that. I jumped to transition. I'm sorry. I'm distracted um, by this picture on Facebook of the boogeyman and Papa Shango writing uh, uh, stuffed animals on Facebook that's popped up. It's breaking that, that'll me. That'll do it. It's breaking me. Uh, former RWA champion Chris Taylor posted it. Another guy we need to get on the show, and uh, uh, I wow, <laughs> sure, I, I'm, I'm down for it. Uh, I, I found the tweets I was talking about. I, I just want to read them really quickly because I think they're very poignant. Um, this is from Excalibur, by the way, from PWG commentary fan. Uh, Ten years from now, there will be a generation of rookies inspired by this current golden age of professional wrestling. How nuts is that? There will be a team. There will be teams inspired by the Bucks that have never heard of the Hardys or the Rockers. Intergender title matches will be commonplace. World of Sport will be forgotten. UWF will be this half-remembered dream, while Hero, Gulak, and Thatcher will be seen as trailblazers. Um, he goes on uh, about more stuff. It really is a magical time to be involved in professional wrestling as a wrestler, fan, both, or something in between. Uh, next time you complain about the current state of wrestling, take a moment and realize how good you have it. This is a literal renaissance. Things are happening now that will reverberate through generations to come. We are all lucky to be able to see it firsthand. And I just feel that was really poignant and, and made a really great point. Um, but going into National Pro Wrestling Day. National Pro Wrestling Day, yes. National uh, Pro Wrestling Day. National Pro Wrestling Day. <laughs> Day of National Pro Wrestling. <laughs> yes. Oh, the old outside joke on this show. Uh, yeah. I had the pleasure of attending the very first National Pro Wrestling Day. Mm-hmm. Oh, good. We're not doing that again. Um, it, it was something completely. It was something completely different at the time. This is molded over time, and, and I think it's a really cool thing that they do. I hate that I I kind of find out about it like the week of, and and even even so, ah, oh, crap. I'm on the wrong computer, and there is all my messages of all the people I was just trying to book. Uh, <laughs> is it is it bad <laughs> that I book people on the show because I think about it during the show? So I'm like, well, I'm gonna kick a message off of them, and now that I'm I'm in booking right. discussions. While I'm on the show, it's multitasking, people. Um, but anyways, <laughs> anyways, that's the point. National Pro Wrestling Day that will pop up here. Um, uh, is this Saturday? Is it this Saturday, Reading, PA? Which uh, if I had, you know what? Yeah, maybe I could swing out there. It's only six hours away, or actually, it's like four hours it's, away. But it's also free. It's also free, which means, am I going to get there and be able to get in? Because you can't pre free to purchase tickets or anything. Mickey James is there as a headliner, so you had me there. Kimber Lee is her opponent. Yep. And, of course, a smattering yep. of people that are just great faces and names and characters that you've known and heard about across Chikara and, and, and things like that. Uh, uh, they got they're, a lot doing of- their, uh, they're doing their entire Young Lions Cup tournament as well. That's incredible. Um, on that night. So there's going to be – and that's a mix of Chikara talents and talents from you know across you know the country. Um so, yeah, a lot of names I haven't heard of, but, hey, you never know. Maybe they'll be really cool. Right, right. Um, I mean, but it is a free show, and it is Chikara, and I, I, I think that that goes a long way as far as things go. Uh, you know, there's a good brand you, you kind of trust there, and, and, and you know what you're getting out of it. I mean, this is kind of a glorified Chikara show, to be quite honest. Um, yeah. And that's okay. Um, it, you know, they're the guys that ran it from the, from the beginning. Uh, Project Polaris is the, is the charity uh, yep. they're, they're taking. It's a. Uh, I don't. Uh, it's either to raise awareness or to contribute to a specific cause to curb uh, human trafficking. Yeah, you know, uh, like human trafficking, labor trafficking, sex trafficking, um, um, that sort of thing. And uh, which I'm, I'm not unfamiliar with, uh, uh, actually. Uh, 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 you know, I, I know some other people that have been working in, in those kinds of areas as well. Uh, so, so a great cause, um, and and it's charity, and and I think it's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool thing for them to do. Pretty cool thing for them to set up. I, I, if you're in the area, able to travel to it. Um, I mean, it's no king of trios or anything, but it's a long, young lions cup, which is something Chikar has done for ages, and it's been a big part of what they do. Uh, I think it's worthwhile, and I, I love doing it. It's, it, it. it's again, you know, a day of celebration of pro wrestling, and 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 yes, it's mm-hmm. Chikara, but uh, and I'd love to see something wider. I, I love the concept, and again, execution is the hardest damn thing. I love the concept of the first year where it was all these representative matches from all these different promotions. Like it was a huge, crazy sample platter. And I'm sure it gave Mike Quackenbush a lot of gray hairs, right? 
Um, yes. <laughs> and with, of course, the International Wrestling Cartel was was a part of that, as well as like Kaiju Big Battle led to some very interesting road stories that that I have in my brain from it. Uh, you know, our friend uh, that's now uh, Eli Sampson over on The Drifter on uh, NXT was a part of that. John McChesney. Um, and it was a, it was a really good time. Uh, yeah. But and uh, but again, I see why they 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 swapped up the formats and made something a little bit different here. Uh, but I, I think it'll be good. Uh, take a look at that. Are they streaming this? Do you know? Is there any word uh, on that? I don't believe this will be streaming, but no, this will be up on, obviously with all the rest of their events on no. uh, on the DVDs as well as on a uh, Chikartopia. Oh wait. So. Oh oh no no I'm sorry. They, they, there is streaming info for last year's actually uh, no. on their website. <laughs> so I, I was like the streaming info right here. No, that's last year. So go check that out. And, of course, uh, around the indies, a lot of cool stuff. Anything that caught your eye out of there this week, uh, Eamon? Uh, I haven't checked it out yet, but Post- I should. Over uh, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, looks like Chris Hero's uh, got a lot of stuff going on. Uh, I'm, actually, I'm not terribly hooked up that I could show a lot of the videos on here. Um, but uh, uh, a lot of cool stuff there. A lot of Chikara, Limitless, Limitless Wrestling. Um, Zack Sabre Jr., who just got a mention with a moose up in maine uh so uh and, and uh, i gotta give a call out to this interesting uh neat bridging bl- backslide let me see if i can pull this up here uh uh that uh, uh who is this Am- ambronian Am- amber oh, oh amber o'neill okay parsing her okay. <laughs> parsing her twitter account apparently um hmm uh, but uh, but yeah, I, you know, really cool stuff there uh, against actually uh, Leva Leva Bates, uh, uh, blue pants, of course, of mm-hmm. of uh, 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 NXT fame, I guess. Uh, mm-hmm. So go check that. Uh, Matt does a great job compiling these things, and uh, and a lot of people are kind of getting notice on it, and and it's really cool uh, to see to see just visually again. He's using social media uh, to its finest, and you can go check out what's going on and get a little peek. Like I, I'm I'm checking out this clip over here. Uh, on the feed of uh, Chris, Chris Hero versus Matt Tremont, a, a friend of the show over at Beyond Wrestling. Uh, and, 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 and check out this venue that they're in. You know, this tiered venue. It looks like it's packed. That's awesome. Nice. That's completely awesome. That's not something um, that number and size and type of venue that you see, at least in this area. And I don't know if you do over there, Eamon, but, you know, mm. again, you get to see the sights and sounds and, and hopefully a little bit of that feeling that we talked about before. Uh, with a lot of these indie promotions, absolutely, um, definitely some really good stuff here on uh, on around the indies. So like like you mentioned, definitely go check it out at indiewrestling.us. Mm-hmm. Oh, and there's a, there's the back bridge for you guys on video as well. All right, Eamon, it's been fun. Uh, thanks, Keith Lee, coming in. Thanks for tracking him down on, on last notice. Uh, we will have we are scheduled to have in about uh, three weeks, I think, from now. Ray Lynn will be joining us. She's been making some waves. She's been on some Women of Honor stuff with Ring of Honor, uh, and of course, uh, just just had some great stuff with uh, Britt Baker, another friend of the show, Angel Dust, and Marty Bell of TNA over in uh, International Wrestling Cartel. Uh, Amen. There's so many people I want to get on the show. I wish we were more than once a week, almost. <laughs> um, so maybe we should start start stacking these things up. I don't know. I don't know. I just, I, I just want to get. Like, hey, can I get you on? Oh, hey, wait three months. You know, uh, yeah. You know, unfortunately, because of the way we schedule. But um, <laughs> you know, like the one that I'm scheduling right now on my phone, because this is how I'm doing things right now. Um, but yeah, uh, stay tuned. Amen at Amen to please check out InspireProWrestling.com for the stuff that he's involved with down there. Hear his his fine fine voice on all those videos from fun 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 mm-hmm. fun day. Uh, and then, and uh, a new event just went up on Smart Mark Video today of our Tag Kid event. Um, so you can go order that on MP4 and uh, VOD. Awesome. Go check it out. Of course, uh, IndieWrestling.us, SilkertronMedia.com, WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Uh, subscribe to this show with all the links over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com, at Mayhem Show on the Twitter. Uh, until next time, support indie wrestling. Show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.